very good evening to you, South Africa and those watching around the world. My name is Blaine Herman and this is It's Topical. Lucia, our digital audience, please, packed program tonight, packed house tonight. As always, good to have them on the program. And I say, as I say every week, please put up your virtual hand and I'll get your comments and questions for our guests. As soon as you do, do my very best to get you on air. Blood, Blades and Bullets, the title of Nathi Olifant's book. It speaks to the issue of hitmen in South Africa. It could also very well be an apt title for the recent crime statistics. October 1st until the end of last year, December last year. During that time under review, 7,555 people were murdered. Over 7,000 in just three months. Again, we ask tonight, have we normalized violence in this country? As important as this data is, the number of people we lose can never be abstract. We have to resist the urge of becoming numb to the sorrow. Why? Because these are precious human lives. They leave behind children, wives, uh, husbands, friends. You hear, you will hear some of these tragic stories here tonight. Fear and uncertainty prevails. And at a time of uncertainty, how do we act? We will discuss, which leads us to the question of the week. And we're asking you, what are the factors that contribute to the high murder rate and the scourge of hitmen? Follow me. So, with regards to the conversation, is it a case of working out new endgame strategies in order to prepare to this such crimes? Or is it a case of implementing the policies we currently have to root out criminal elements in society? Let us know. And it's topical. SABC. Now, time for your round up. All right, let's start with one of the topical stories of the day. The disaster has struck in some parts of the country, among them Dielpan in the northwest and parts of the Eastern Cape. Shops have also been shut down in flooding in Ladysmith in KwaZulu-Natal. The Water and Sanitation Department has issued a warning to those living along the Val and Orange River systems of rising water levels and possible flooding. Farmers and residents on the banks of the lower Val and Orange Rivers have been advised to prepare for evacuation due to rapidly rising water levels after 12 sluice gates of the Val Dam were opened on Saturday. Let's take a look at uh, another top trending stories of the weekend. Uh, South African hip hop star Keenan Forbes was laid to rest at the Hero Heroes Acre at West Park Cemetery in Johannesburg yesterday. Popularly known as AKA Forbes was brutally gunned down outside a restaurant in Durban uh, last week, in fact. He was murdered with his longtime friend and celebrity chef, Tebello Tibbs Matswane. Funeral services for both were, ha were privately held on Saturday. All right, so the issue of crime and the alarming murder rate is under the spotlight, as highlighted by such cases as the murder of AKA. And it leads us back to our topic of tonight. And we need context. For that, we turn to the magic war, what we know, and why it matters. These are some of the statistics, crime statistics that were released by the uh, police minister. And it's just a three month period, right? Look at that, the number I was telling you about, 7,555. This is an increase of 10%. 7,000, over 7,000 attempted murder, an increase of over 24%. Let's take a look at this now. These are some of the trends. When we look at the top trends, and this is from October 2022, in comparison to October 2021, that three month period. And as you can see, KwaZulu-Natal up, Houting up, Eastern Cape up, Western Cape all up. Why? That's the big question. We will discuss some of the factors. And then, these are some of the recent suspected murder hits. In February, and these are all this year, right? Have a look at this. KwaZulu-Natal Gauteng Limpopo. Chairperson of the Umtlabul Yalingana Society Against Crime, Judah Mtetwa, shot dead. Activist Ayub Mungali, shot dead in El Dorado Park. We have a guest tonight to talk more about this, so stand by for that. And Gumbu, uh, village chief Tagalani Gumbu, shot dead as well. Questions. To what extent is crime 
and economic self-interest entrenched in this country. If personal, uh, business or political conflicts are being resolved through the use of violence, what implications will this have on our democratic processes? We will bring you the better minds on the program in a short while to discuss. But first, let's interrogate what is increasingly becoming a scourge in certain sectors of our society. The troubling use of hitmen, the use of these men and women to take out rivals has become reportedly become common in some industries. The SABC's current affairs show, Cutting Edge, recently aired a, a program in conversation with one such person, a hitman, and that shows, show has since gone viral on social media platforms. Why? Take a look. Moba, Ilapo, a sugar, six telling the tele, Baku, Moba, a teen school of Labo, Uncle Lavanda, but Baham being born about Tandaza, who was so better ladies and Tabangazas, Tina Suezas with a tongue in Munsil and Mugota name my angel, name my seven swab, Utum Puma Wopi, a bushel, Utum seven swab, no mintab, Umundo Mati, Unesbeat. Mais information Gensega <laughs> Alright, let's not waste any time. I want to speak to the name that you saw on the screen, Spiewa Linda. Let me bring him in to discuss this mission that he had, this assignment that he had in order to bring you and I answers. Good to have you on the program, brother. Thank That's you very much you. indeed for coming on. Take a seat. Let's discuss. Thank you. Uh, firstly, with regards to the purpose of such an interview, why did you do it? Look, um, it is my job um, yes. to infiltrate spaces uh, that ordinary people can infiltrate. Mm. You know, um, so the purpose 
was to inform our audience, you know, how does um, hit band work? Yeah. So sitting across the person you interviewed, hearing the answers to your questions firsthand, what stood out for you uh, during that period? Yo, <laughs> the fact that um, these people, um, we, we, we live with them in our communities. Um, they are family mm. men, you know, they are not just monsters that you would, when you come across them in the street and run away, you know, they are very respectful people, mm. you know, and no one knows that um, they are doing this job. You know, mm -hmm. I think that, um, yeah, that, that was the highlight of the interview. Yeah. Um, th there might be income around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, let's just talk about the process then um, and the challenges you came up. I'm sure it wasn't easy getting somebody to talk For sure. on camera, albeit uh, face hidden. But talk to us about some of those challenges in terms of the process and getting answers. Um, look, um, I was given his contact details mm. by my source and yeah, and I was introduced to mm. him, but, um, having to secure, um, the appointment, mm. you know, on the day where we are supposed to meet, um, he, we were initially, we were supposed to meet during the day, then he kept on postponing, mm. postponing, and we ended up meeting at night, you know. Um, only to find out during the interview, he made it deliberately for us to meet at night. Mm. He was busy searching who am I, mm. you know, mm. um, what car am I driving and, yeah. you know, and yeah. So I think that was a scary moment yeah. and me and the uh, video journalist, when we called the guy, you know, yeah. and him now knowing the car that we're driving and, and, and yeah. yeah seeing us when we 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 we, we are not seeing him mm, mm. you know i think that was yeah a scary moment and, and speaking about sources and the information a lot of information came out uh in that interview um and i just wonder do you do you think that police might be knocking your door to give up your source <laughs> uh look um i have a right to protect my source correct um and I'm not a police. Mm -hmm. um, my job is to inform um, the nation, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I can't do police uh, work. Mm -hmm. They have to do their own investigations and, and, and all of those. Yeah. yeah. How would you respond to some pushback, some criticism saying that such reports glamorizes whatever, you know, we're talking about in terms of a hitman, a life in times of hitman. How would you respond to that criticism? Yeah, one might say I'm glamorizing it and the other one might say I'm informing, mm. you know. Um, these things happen. Look at the case of AKA, yeah. you know, and a lot of celebrities, yeah. um, 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 DJ somebody, um, R5 in Pretoria, yeah. you know, and recently, just a week or a few days before we televised um, the story on Cutting Edge, um, a counselor in Umkondo and two other guys were also shot. So yeah. it's something that is happening. Yeah. So I was informing, in fact, we were informing, mm. you know, the purpose of the story was to inform. Right. You know, so if someone says we are glamorizing mm. it, well, Others, they are happy. Mm. Those who lost their life, their, their loved ones, mm. Mm. Uh, their parents and, you know, brothers mm. and whatnot. Now they know how these people operate, yeah. you know, and maybe it also might help um, police yeah. in terms of, yeah, um, yeah uh, if they want to do arrests, I mean, we, we gave them um, the, the lead in terms of how these people operate mm. and mm. whatnot. You know, yeah, but do you get a sense? I mean, having spoken to such a person, uh, do you get a sense that police maybe understand or do they have an understanding of how this all works? Well, yeah, I don't want to speak on mm. behalf of mm. the police. Um, yeah, I really don't want yeah. to speak on behalf of them. What, what sort of feedback did you get post this insert area? 
people, they said, <laughs> I remember there is a comment saying, no, I mean, I was not going to go there, mm. especially when this guy says, no, yeah. I see you. I was yeah. going to go. And I, when I was like, no, if he sees you, if you make a U-turn, mm. it's simple that they can follow you, mm. you know. Yeah. yeah but um, as an investigative journalist, we risk our lives to get these yeah. kind of stories. Look, your job is uh, no child's play. Uh, and indeed, you are doing great journalism, you and your team. Somebody said that uh, just before we got on air that you like to live on edge, on the edge. Uh, so Cutting Edge is the perfect program for you, my brother. So thank you very much and to you and your team, your EP and your, you know, the, the, the camera people. Uh, great job. Thank you very much indeed. You've, you've lifted up the curtain and, you know, giving us a window into what many don't understand. Spiro Linda, appreciate your time. See so the, one of the other popular features that we have is the word on the street. It's where we go out and ask you for your opinion on the matter at hand. So we took to the streets of Windsor East in Johannesburg to talk about the scourge of targeted, targeted killings uh, of popular and importantly ordinary people in this country. Take a look. Contributing factor of crime, more a special matter, is because of poverty. And they're not meaning that if someone is suffering, he must kill. But let's say, for, for instance, you give me 10,000 rand now. You say I must get rid of blah, 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 and then of which I don't have it. Automatically, I can be tempted. I think there are too many guns on the streets. You know, uh, there have been too much uh, gun killings in our society. I think guns uh, has become a menace in our society. So there is a lot of um, um, effort that needs to be uh, put towards um, gun uh, licensing. In most countries, they will tell you that only a policeman and a soldier, those are the people that are, you will find carrying a gun. But here in South Africa, it's a different story. So if uh, those people in our parliament or wherever who are, those who, are, who are making laws, they can try by all means to say only a policeman and a soldier must carry a gun. I think it will be better. I think they should bring back the death penalty. If a person is arrested, they mustn't be on parole. They must check those things before. If he was on parole before, then they must keep on checking, do the check background and everything. Some people, you find that they know who does kind of things, but then they can't even report them. They're scared. Otherwise, crime is too high in this country. So we just, we just don't know what to do. In point of view, uh, you can see somebody's enjoying and getting beers whatsoever, enjoying himself. But that one, why me not? And then you can see uh, the arguments starting from there. So that's why they're killing each other. Please, guys, why can't you just create some jobs in there whatsoever so that people, they can be busy? That's all. All right, I want to explore this issue even further to help me unpack this issue. In studio, we have criminologist from the Tswane University of Technology, Professor Kolofelo Rahubu, uh, social activist, uh, Deraline James, who is from El Dorado Park. Uh, and on Zoom, we have former Sunday Times journalist, Nati Olifant, who is the author, author of crime books such as Blood, Blades and Bullets, Anatomy of a Gliblin's Hitman and the Fugitives. Uh, thank you very much indeed, ladies, gentlemen. We also have our digital audience there as well. Uh, we're going to get their take. Just a reminder, we have very short time. So if you want to jump in, digital audience, please raise your hand. And I'll bring you, uh, try to do my best to bring you into the conversation as soon as possible. Daryl, into you first. Uh, the prominent anti-gang, anti-corruption activist, Ayub uh, Mungali, was killed recently. Talk to us about what this does to a community that is dealing with violence. Well, I think, thank you so much for having me this evening. I think for the, for the most, um, the night it happened, we were all together as activists. Mm. And it was the, the, the sense of fear 
you know, and, and uncertainty because we've always just seen um, gang leaders being gunned down and just random acts of violence in our community, but never specifically aimed or targeted at one of us mm. who's fighting the scourge of violence and of drugs in the community. So yes, um, mixed emotions at the moment. We're not sure what to make of it. Mm. We're not sure if it was a hit. We haven't heard from the police. We're not sure in terms of how far the investigation is. But yes, it leaves us unsettled to a point where we're not even certain and we don't even feel safe going out to assist. Last right. night, I had an Uber hijacking outside my house and I felt like, you know what, is this a setup? Mm. Should I I go out and I go out so that's the feeling right now uncertain to a point that is hurts the resolve of the community to keep on fighting to that extent I think so much has happened over the past years yeah. where we've been fighting the scourge of violence and substance in our community and for us I think we've built a great sense of resilience I think we we know what the goal is we know what we set out to do and we know that it's not going to happen overnight yeah. and we know that the game that we're in comes with an element of risk mm -hmm. where you know you're, you're in the forefront of fighting crime and you sort of tapping into people's pockets you know, so it matters to them. But we've just continued to say, you know what, it cannot be that this is the state of our community. Mm. It cannot be that we are going backwards. And we also realize the socioeconomic circumstances in our community that sort of gives rise to what is unfolding yeah. in our areas. Professor, to that point, in terms of the contributing factors that give rise to violence in communities such as Al Rawada Park, but we're talking generally in South Africa, um, and also now, the so-called rise of hitmen or women um, in communities. What are some of these factors? Uh, thank you and good evening to criminology community out there. Um, the contributing factor we can talk of poverty and unemployment because those give rise mm. uh, to the commercialization of assassinations. Right. And again, we can tap into South Africa's history. We've got a very dark uh, history right. that fuels violence and our socio-political landscape creates a reservoir of violence which fuel um, uh, this kind of, yeah. of, 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 of uh, crimes. Right. Yeah. Nati, let me bring you in uh, with regards to some of your research. What does it tell us in terms of the ubiquity of hits in society? Uh, is it closely linked to South Africa's past? If you can unmute, uh, Nutty. Are oh, we battling to hear you? Let's just try it one more time. If you can unmute. All right, we'll, we'll try to come back and play. We'll try to sort out your audio. Let's go to our digital audience, get their tech. As I say, we've got a, a huge community of uh, criminologists in the making, some of them. Uh, good to tap into their better minds in terms of what we're talking about here. Let's tap, uh, start with Sizwe, Master of Criminology, postgraduate Sizwe. Um, talk to us, if you can unmute, talk to us about what are these factors? Do you see it as uh, the question I posed to, to Nati uh, from any research that you have done? Has it any links to our past? Yes, uh, good evening to my colleagues and good evening to the viewers at home. Uh, I concur with the professor. That's one of the most contributing factors to, 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 the, to high crime that is committed by the hitman, mm. which is murder. This, it, it is the high level of, of unemployment is, is the main factor which contributes to, the, to, to, to this sort of crime. Yes, poverty is also the, 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 the matter. Right. Because, because of when, 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 people, when most people are not, are not working or are not employed, are unemployed, yes, they get frustrated. Then, so then to after they are frustrated, they need something to gain profits to feed their families. Mm -hmm. So it's because of the desperation that if I offer someone 50,000 50, rands to kill somebody, mm -hmm. yes, surely that person will do that because he, he needs, he needs to kill his family. Right. Uh, yes. Sunshine, oh. if you can jump in, uh, you've got your hand up. Uh, concur? Disagree? 
Uh, thank you very much. Greetings to your viewers and everyone in this platform. I concur with the previous speaker and the professor that there are fundamental causal factors of crime of the, of crime that we have seen in our society. But from where from where I am, I would describe the nature of crime in South Africa as an intergenerational crime behavioral patterns, mm -hmm. because we the previous speaker spoke on how apartheid contributed to the type and level of violence in our society. Further to that, we, we saw the, the, the fights between INCATA and ANC. Uh, fast forward, we had the first must fall that uh, was characterized by high levels of crime and looting and end. Mm. In 2021, we saw the July unrest that were characterized by high levels of violence. So I can, really, uh, can fairly describe the, the, the nature and type of, of violence in our society as an intergenerational crime behavioral patterns. And one of the elements that we have seen in our schools, there's a high level of violence in our high schools and our primary schools, where you have seen 13 year old murdering their educators in schools. So this shows that there is a crime behavioral pattern that we need to address as a country, which can be attributed to a lot of things as the previous speakers have, have spoken about. But the other aspect that the, the levels of crime can be attributed to is that we, we have seen a moral degeneration in our society mm. where crime has been normalized. You, you cannot explain how a person can be shot at a broad daylight without any level of people saying this is a wrong, this is a wrong behavior. Mm. How as society have we allowed um, rape cases to go so high. How does a 40-year-old rape a three-year-old? We, we, we cannot explain um, how all those forms of crime have been happening in our society. It, so it's attributed to a lot of things. Is it a case of going back to our corners, becoming insular, worrying about my family and not yours? Or is it a case of fear? If I speak up, I'm next. So for me, criminals be, belong to a society. So crime, criminals don't behave, belong to a zoo. So there's a need for a societal approach where communities agree on an approach that says, how do we deal with crime in our communities? It can, it can come from a place of fear if I'm going to say, I know that um, in my next door neighbor, they deal with drugs, but we need to agree on, 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 a, on a community or a societal based approach on how do we deal with crime in our different communities communities and, 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 and society. Right. So we, we need that integrated approach. All right. Uh, Control, just let me know when Nati Olifan is back on. I want to tap into his brain in terms of what his re uh, research says. Uh, Luan Diso, let's go to you uh, as well. Uh, is our contract killings more common in terms of solving personal issues than we realize? Uh, good evening um, to you and to our viewers. Um, I'm Bambini. Uh, good to see you, Prof. Uh, Colofelo, my former colleague. Um, deducing from our um, um, previous uh, discussion, um, we are living in a, in a broken window society and, uh, and in an anomic society. Um, this uh, society that we are in today um, is quite of um, a lawlessness society where people uh, do not actually uh, respect each other. Um, due to this uh, anomic society that we're in, um, uh, victimologically, we, we, we all share the equal chances of being potential victims of crime. Um, uh, 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 when I actually uh, uh, discuss about the AK, uh, a, um, uh, assassination um, uh, uh, victimization, uh, AKA was actually killed um, in that uh, situation, but um, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, it is so sensitive to discuss about such matters because uh, we are actually at times as uh, uh, researchers and and informants tend to actually tamper with the, 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 the physical evidence. Those who actually uh, circulated such footages on AKA, at times they actually uh, tempered with the uh, physical evidence. And uh, that um, uh, 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 the, 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 the detectives should actually get uh, 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 a concrete evidence from the, the, the reliable sources. Because what if that person touched one of the poles and in that uh, uh, in those footages that are circulating on the 
on the on the on the on the media, mm. a, a person could uh, actually raise such evidence. So going back to the issue of uh, 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 the high crime rate in society, uh, the nature and extent of crime in South Africa is is very high, and we are having alarming. I mean, uh, rates in South Africa in terms of the killings. Uh, this is due to the, we take from uh, the recent crime statistics yeah. based on the lockdown and crimes before lockdown and after lockdown. If you can see this actually uh, a crime statistic that we're having today of 7,505 yeah. uh, 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 killed uh, uh, the victims, it was between the, the period of the lockdown and the period where the lockdown was actually uplifted, meaning that during the lockdown, there was high visibility of law enforcers and the law was actually applied across the South Africa and across uh, the nations, meaning that there was a little bit of um, uh, uh, of, of smuggled uh, uh, firearms, illegal firearms, because police were actually doing their visibility, working in the street. I should think police should also go to a point whereby they actually adopt a new style of uh, uh, of observation than oh, using so. vehicles. They must yeah. work. On I guess I, 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 we get your point in terms of, uh, you know, the high police visibility and it's an important factor as a deterrent in terms of various crimes uh, in this country. Of course the issue of uh, the process of, of evidence as well, it needs to be secured from the time that that crime is committed uh, you know, because it has a ripple effect on the subsequent qu uh, trial as well. Uh, but important points indeed. I want to talk to Professor in a short while with regards to gun violence uh, and the availability and how it is linked to uh, the number of murders that's uh, committed. Is there a correlation? Uh, Nati Olifan, back with us. Uh, sir, good to have you on the program as well, because you've done some extensive research and written books with regards to hits. Um, and talk to us about the ubiquity of hits in society. Uh, how closely linked is it to South Africa's difficult past? Oh, no. Gremlins again. <laughs> That's a pity. We'll try to come back. Prof, let's pick it up with you with regards to the availability uh, of, of guns in society. Is that a, a major issue in terms of the contribution of the increase in murders or is it just simply motive? Um, I, would, I would say it, it is linked. Um, mm. Easy access uh, and availability uh, of illegal firearms mm. and uh, re multiple research has indicated that there's actually an influx of um, illegal firearms that comes through our borders mm -hmm. and now challenges with the uh, implementation of the firearm control act 60 of 2000 mm. there has been multiple discrepancies with the application and corruption as well because our law enforcers uh, are really failing us in that regard mm. People that are not supposed to own guns are owning guns mm. in South Africa. There are certain elements due to the nature of criminality that we should take into consideration when one has to own a gun. Mm. Because the, 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 the um, Firearm Control Act is very particular with who is supposed to own it. But due to crime level and mm. the current statistics, we should review it and assess it. And now our biggest challenge is... SAPS that is supposed to lead in that regard. Mm. If they are failing us, they do have their own issues. Uh, the issue of, of um, relating to corruption that they are failing to deal with. Now, that also correlates with the accessibility, availability. Yeah. They spoke of amnesties, they spoke of stop and searches, mm. but we know in South Africa, 100 rand alone can let you pass with an illegal yeah. firearm. We uh, just bear in mind that we did invite the police onto the program, they weren't available. But let's pick it up. We'll need to you know, get the answers. Obviously, yeah. we, they need to provide us answers. The argument, and uh, mainly you hear it uh, overseas, America in particular, that um, you know, it's not guns that kill people. It's people that kill people. Sure. How do you think the framing of that argument affects the fight against gun violence? It, it is a, a human being that decides to utilize a gun. Mm. And my decision as a perpetrator to commit crime depends on the availability of or, or knowledge 
of of, preco of, of repercussion, mm. should I be mm. called. Mm. Now, the laxity of, of, of our justice system also perpetuates level of criminality. I don't think if I were to go to Botswana, mm. they experience what we're experiencing today because it's clear of what is coming your way should be you be involved in crime in Botswana or Zimbabwe. Mm. Now, South Africa sh should also rethink because we need deterrence. We need generic deterrence because our generation that is coming up will now resort to con utilization of guns to solve conflicts mm. and with the uh, you know the, the public the publicization of, of of guns gun violence and so forth it, it now becomes a, a community culture yeah. we are very violent and we are comfortable in that state and now we're not going to, we're not going to be able to deal mm. with gun violence because now how do we tell a, a, a 16 year old that you are not supposed to have a gun when they've seen how many people are killed daily yeah. now for, for 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 them to be safe they will utilize guns yeah. because remember in South Africa the biggest challenge right now we don't have devices to, 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 to secure ourselves due to load shading the yeah. only device that I should have that does not even require power mm. electricity is a gun so it, 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 it will require um, synchronization mm, mm. a holistic approach a whole of society approach because yeah. it touches on multiple multiple factors yeah. societal political and economical and still today i say we need political will in that regard mm. particularly with what what are replications mm. what should happen to people that decide to yeah. commit crime it's people that decide to use guns yeah. and kill people it's, it's a decision yeah. it's not guns that perpetuate level of criminality yeah. people should own gun and south africa does produce mm. um legal firearms yes. legal firearms however due to loss and theft and, and corruption then they end up in the pool yeah. of illegal firearms that now we are facing one of the key words you use is deterrence i want to talk to darlene when we come back uh, we need to take a quick break about these deterrents also the temperature of views on the ground what are people saying the resolve to keep on fighting where are we in this game more next Welcome back. As you know, on this program, we were trying to figure out how to get to that better place. We're talking about some of the factors that contribute to the high murder rate. You heard those statistics. Over a three-month period, over 7,000 people were murdered in South Africa. We've got to get to a better place, my brothers and sisters. Let's talk to Darlene uh, James. She's an activist in El Dorado Park. Talk to us about the, the temperature of views on the ground in terms of the keep on fighting. And what are some of the contributing factors in terms of the community that, that you in uh, that leads to this violent nature? Some of the contributing factors, and we've actually gone out, and I think El Dorado Park would be the perfect case study here when you look at, you know, why people are actually committing these crimes. Mm -hmm. You know, you would walk into a lolly lounge or you would confront a drug dealer in the area and you would say to them, why are you doing this? Are you not aware of what is happening, what it's causing to fam, what it's doing to our families? And they would say to you, what else are we meant to do? There's no opportunities in our community. There's no jobs available in our community. So some of these perpetrators of these uh, crimes actually just do so to put a loaf of bread on mm. the table and that's the reality yeah. of where i come from yeah yeah let's try to bring in a nazi olifant again third time's the charm i hope uh so good to we need your better mind on this subject and i know you have written extensively on it uh, a number of books i need to understand when we say uh, that there's a rise in terms of hitmen or women in south africa is that a fair assessment or has it always been there we just only hearing about it more now. Thank you so much. I apologize for the glitches. <laughs> um, I think it's a fair assessment of the situation when we say the hitmen are on the rise or assassination are on the rise. You know, uh, one of our panelists, you know, spoke about the commercial commercialization of um, killings. Um, you also asked a question about whether it's in inherent, but yeah. yes, it comes from. And it's a mixed bag of uh, historical facts, you know, that contribute to all the state, the current state of affairs that we find ourselves in at the moment. Uh, it's a social factor, is a political factor, mm. and it's a commercial factor. All those combined, you know, they created a breeding ground for 
for the Conrad killers, you know, to right. thrive, you know. And somebody saw so, so a business opportunity, of course, you know, and started to recruit these young boys from rural areas, uh, bring them into urban areas, you know, house yeah. them in hostels. You know. As you know, in Devon, you know, we've got a number of hostels, and especially in Cleveland, the hostel where it's, it's become a hive of um, you know, Conrad killers, you know, that neck in there and outside of it. And they've got handlers. Mm. Uh, someone spoke about uh, people living, you know, f family men um, am living among us, you know, who also have day jobs, good day jobs, mm -hmm. and by night, you know, they partake into this uh, killing business, you know, and it's all wreaking havoc. Yeah. I think your, your panelists have hit the nail on the head. You know, in terms of assessing, you know, the yeah. current state of affairs. Uh, you, you mentioned some of the factors, and to what extent is the political and economic nuances major factors in terms of hits in South Africa? From your research, uh, what I found easily is that you know, it, it's easy to take out someone, whether it be the rival in business, be the rival mm. in, in, in politics. Uh, what is more concerning is the willingness to do that and the extent to which people go to do that and the attainment of such weapons. You know? Usually it's illegal weapons, uh, weapons stolen from police barracks or police armory as weapons um, smuggled in, yeah. say, from Mozambique. You know, people are carrying, you know, in broad daylight, you know, without any impunity. AK-47. I'm sure if you can ask you know, the cops, you know, they'll tell you that that weapon is outlawed you know, in this country. Mm -hmm. But you see security, private security companies also carrying these, these weapons, you know, working with them in broad daylight in full view mm -hmm. of, of law enforcement agencies, you know, and they know they can get away with it because mm -hmm. nobody cares to question, you know, where they get these weapons and how they are used, you know. They are not even taken for ballistics, you know, to see what other crimes they have committed before. Mm. So it's it, it's a all it's all encompassing in, in one, you know, uh, mess that we found ourselves in. Mm. Uh, let's take it to our digital audience. Uh, let's speak to Tobile. Tobile, your contribution, if you can unmute. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Tobile. Go ahead. For having me. Um, I know everyone is talking about the statistics. They're talking about uh, what can be done to achieve, uh, to achieve a better place for the country. However, of course, we live in a society whereby there's zero consequences, mm. even for the smallest crimes. So with people knowing very well that whatever they commit, no one is going to persecute them whatsoever. And what are the chances of them being found for that matter? Mm. Thank God for AKA's uh, shooting, there was video footage. Other than that, mm. it would have been something that uh, we are not aware of. There could have been speculations for all we know. But because of the video footage, we know exactly what happened. And we know that the people who are hired to kill, they've been in existence for a, a very long time in this country. Yeah. A gun is accessible to myself as well. Anyway, I can go to any township in a hostel and buy a gun. Anyone can access a gun in this country. And it's not like the cops don't know this. They mm. do know this very well. Even if a, pe a perpetrator gets to be arrested, there would be a judge or a, pre a prosecutor in the pocket. Yeah. Tomorrow you will see a person that has been arrested by the cops. Here in the township, it's what we witness on a daily. Mm. So it's nothing new what we've seen on AKS death. May he still rest in peace, unfortunately. Yeah. However... It's something that needs to be looked at in terms of the consequences. It seems as if we have the best constitution in the world. However, it's not working for any of us. Mm. What should be done is yeah. discipline and also there should be great consequences, especially when it comes to someone's life. Thank you. Tobito, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Sambato, Mbata, uh, jump in with regards to your research. What Tobile has been saying is, rings a bell. Um, yes, thank you so much. Um, greetings to the panel and also to the viewers at home. Uh, I'd like to coincide with um, uh, what um, my other colleagues have said, uh, like like poverty and also uh, where we come from as a country, like apartheid. But uh, the, I think the huge problem is our criminal justice system. I think that if we could cooperate maybe with uh, internationals in terms of strategies to prevent crime, that that would be much would be much better uh, because um, our criminal justice system is not like um, going all out in terms of uh, 
preventing crime. Like uh, we, we do find people that um, would rather not report the crime because they they, they state that uh, it, it will be like it it wouldn't make sense or wouldn't go anywhere because uh, when we see the crime. Um, we were, according to research, we have like a less than three percent of crime that is reported mm. that is actually concluded um, within um, the courts, and that becomes a very huge problem. Like uh, in the beginning of the show, uh, we were shown that uh, the murder cases we have murder cases that are seven thousand, and we also have uh, sexual offences cases running about nine thousand. So the real question to ask is amongst these cases how many were resolved how many how many people came uh through to justice and how many people were um uh, uh prosecuted because of these and um uh going into like our the policies and also impl implementation i think our our country and also the criminal justice system need to act um uh, in terms of implementing uh, these uh strategies because um they need to act because uh, if we don't act on them, they're just a piece of papers doing nothing. Right. So Welcome. acting uh, them out is really good. Thank you very Thank much, you so indeed. Much. Let's uh, go to Noluvo and then we'll take Davi, who's a forensic private investigator. I want to get Davi's take as well. Uh, Noluvo, first to you. Good evening. Thank you for the platform. I would concur with Prof and other viewers here on this platform. Mm by saying the high employment figures and poverty and other factors are the contributing factors to violent crimes in SA. As Mr. Linda, I think, said that it is not the issue, Have, having a gun is not the issue, but those people who use gun, guns to, to shoot other people or being hired as hitmen, I think they use guns that are unlicensed because when you have a gun that is licensed, it is so much impossible to just point up your gun yeah. in point black in front of everyone and shoot people because you do think of the consequences that it can be traced back to you and yeah. all that stuff. So I think we, we need a, 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 a police, like a prosecutor lady, police investigation for these crime, crime right. rates that are rising right. in South Africa to solve this particular issue. Luba, thank you very much indeed. Let's speak to somebody who does a bit of investigating. Davi Nodea, uh, forensic uh, private investigator, if you can unmute, uh, sir, how many cases do you get with regards to finding out or locating hitmen uh, here in South Africa? What's your take? Uh, good evening, all. Yes, um, look, I come from the police committee and I deal with these type of issues on a daily basis. And um, even myself uh, has been on numerous hits and people have tried to assassinate me numerous times. So I live a lifestyle of uh, cloak and dagger. Mm. So basically, I think we sit with a huge problem. We've basically lost the fight. If we're not going <laughs> to, if we're not going to make huge sacrifices and changes in the landscape of this country, we are going to slip down further and further and further. Mm. I'm talking from experience here, guys. Nothing which this panel or any panel is stating. It's all obvious, but there needs to be actions. But there's two of them. It's the huge social economic problem we've got in this country. This country is basically a third world country, right? With first world laws and enclavements and stuff like that. It's not working. So what I'm trying to say there is our police incompetent, really, man. I mean, uh, it's the, the lack of training, the, 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 the professionalism, the, the, the experience. Guys, come on, man. <laughs> it's useless. They, they, the only thing they can investigate, if you bring someone who stole a bunch of bananas, investigate this case. To, to catch an assassin and to chase and hunt these people down forensically and to do it properly is a, is, is, is a different ballgame. They're not capable of doing that. It might be swats here and there. We need a political change. We need our people in this country has been bled dry by this political system. I'm obviously not in a position to talk much about this. I'll leave it to the people. I saw on, on, on a YouTube uh, lady, I nearly fell on my back um, last week. She, she's called CV, CV Web. I think she's the chief whip of the DA. Go and watch that clip. Go and see what that lady spoke about, what's going on in this country. Go and look at it. She spoke from her heart, a black lady speaking truth. So basically, guys, 
it's going to be this political change. It's going to be sitting with this social economical problem. We are the worst on the on the Gini coefficient mm. uh, uh, um, um, scale in the world. How are we going to change this? We're not going to change it because we're sitting with a huge problem. We need people, bold South African people, to make change and to make real political yeah. change without just bleeding the people dry. The, the answers, and you can look from Craig Corp, Transnet, yeah. ESCOM, SAPS, everything is failed. Everything the, 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 the government put their claws into is a failure. Dabi, we need change, guys. We, this, this is rotten to the core. Dabi, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. The bearer of, bad, bad, of bad. We hear you. We, we can't let people uh, literally get away with murder, right? Uh, action is needed. Political will is needed. What about the spiritual world? Khadebe uh, Talk to us. Uh, with your author and manifest. Uh, where do you see this, uh, the solutions in these issues? Our greetings to the viewers at home and everybody who's joined this meeting. Um, very pleased to be invited tonight. Well, you know, it's very complicated because, you know, uh, our government sector has really failed us uh, together with the police academy or those who actually are supposed to give us security. I mean, like, this country is vulnerable when it comes to this uh, whole entirely uh, security that everybody should actually have. I mean, like... Um, this gangsterism is infiltrated with the, uh, with the police to actually only think about their pockets instead of being conscious and understand what it means if you're going to let anything happen in terms of bringing more killings in this country. And to look at this in a different way, it's like an agenda. I think this thing has been done on purpose to actually ensure that uh, our country is always vulnerable to the point that if anything could happen, anybody can come inside here and create or, may, or maybe terrorists come in here and do whatever they please. This puts us in the map to actually be very vulnerable. And I don't think that it's something that is very wise because it puts everybody in danger every single day. No one is safe anymore. And um, if we don't actually change the, uh, the society and how our government is actually giving us those services that are very poor, mm. it's going to actually bring the whole chaos in this country and everybody's going to kill each other because of it. Yeah. Uh, we're fast running out of time. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, let's try to get quick comments from Philip as well as Wanda. Philip, to you first, as brief as you can, sir. Okay, Philip. Thank you for... Go ahead. Let's try that one more time. Thank you for having me, uh, sir. Uh, look, uh, from our observation, uh, we, we have actually noticed that uh, the increase of crime in the, in the country is because of the illegal firearms. And uh, the, the previous speaker, I think it's Mbata, she mentioned about the, the justice system. We, we, we have police, we have the justice system, we have the correctional services. So all these three, they actually need to work together so that they can be able to reintegrate the, the criminals back in the community. But now we are unfortunate that we are no longer dealing with only the South Africans. We are dealing with illegal uh, immigrants who are in the country. And in most cases, they are the ones who are being used to, to, to commit this kind of crimes. And the other speakers mentioned the issue of um, the availability of uh, illegal guns. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that part is quite scary because uh, every second person in the, in the country, I think they are winning uh, the illegal firearms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it actually makes it very easy for them to, to, to commit crime using those illegal firearms. Right. And the other issue, again, is the, the, the social uh, factors, uh, like your, your, your poverty right. in, the, in, the, in the community. That threat, yeah. makes it even makes it even much easier for, for, for people to want to kill someone else for remuneration. So it actually becomes a bit easier for them to, 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 to want to kill for someone for even a little money. Yeah. I was reading this other article regarding the, how much well, are I, people I, I, paying. Unfortunately, I can't get to that article. I will try to beg my boss for one more hour. Uh, let's see what happens. Wanda, unfortunately, we can't get to you, but we'll get your comments posted on social media. Darlene, as well as Professor, appreciate your better minds on the subject. Obviously, it's an ongoing conversation. We'll have you back on our various platforms. You need to take this further. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Nasty also, great to have you on the program. Here's my take before we go. Fear can be a contagious agent. Uh, it has the potential of severely, severely debilitating community, communities. Debilitated communities weakens a nation's resolve to progress. It undermines the fight for peace and prosperity. We need to arrest fear. How? 
One way is reducing the opportunities for crime, visible policing, prevention and detection. Look, part of our job is to give voice to your struggle so that those who can make a difference can hear you loud and clear. It's all about keeping those in power honest and proactive rather than reactive. It's about, you know, all about putting purpose to this pain, the pain that you hear on this program and monitoring the heartbeat of this nation. That's our job because self-interest can never be our resting pulse. And that's my take. If you missed anything, be sure to watch this episode of It's Topical on YouTube. Until next week, my brothers and sisters, take care. Bye-bye.